the Ethereum naming service is a really big deal. Okay, this is one of those ones that's really important. And if you have no idea what this is and you care about crypto, like this is way more important than any, you know, Shiba Inu or, oh, you know, this game is going to be amazing in 10 years once we get out of. Yeah, no, th this is happening now and it's extremely important. So what is the Ethereum name service? All right, this is basically the DNS for Ethereum. DNS stands for domain name service or domain name system. It is the phone book of the internet. So basically, the reason that I can go to just randomly, for example, ESPN.com, instead of having to be like, oh, you know, fuck. Instead of having to be like, oh, do, 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 do. Okay, that's the IP address. Like, why do we get to use a URL, right? It's because of the DNS. So the DNS domain name service lets ESPN use a name, and then your computer knows to go to this crazy string of numbers, which is the actual address, the IP address. Just kind of like the phone book of the internet. How do I get there? Oh, well, they, you know, this will lead you to the directions to the place. So ENS does this for Ethereum. So what is the Ethereum name service? Now that I gave that brief idea, let's jump into it. I'm just going to go through the introduction. We're not going to go through everything, but the introduction here, let's read it. The Ethereum name service is a distributed, open, and extensible naming system. I don't know what extensible means, to be honest, based on the Ethereum blockchain. ENS's job is to map human readable names, like, for example, Alice.eth, to machine readable identifiers such as Ethereum addresses, other cryptocurrency addresses, content hashes, and metadata. So you as a human can use something simple like this and your computer can deal with long strings of random numbers and letters, which human brains do not do a good job of managing. ENS also supports reverse resolution, making it possible to associate metadata like names or interface descriptions with addresses. So my ETH address could be Quixotic Flux, right? I think that's the idea there. Top level domains like .eth and .test are owned by smart contracts called registrars which specify rules governing the allocation of their subdomains. That means the smart contract code written, uh, which interacts with the blockchain of Ethereum, is able to be used in combination with these names to do the things that you want it to do, to help us visit websites, send you know, NFTs to each other, exchange value in various ways. Uh, stuff like that. Because of the hierarchical nature of ENS, anyone who owns a domain at any level may configure subdomains. So if Alice owns Alice.eth, Alice she can create pay.alice.eth. Maybe that's the at subdomain she uses for all the payments she gets for some kind of business she's running or something like that. So I own quixoticflux.eth. Don't send anything there yet because I haven't, I need to finish setting it up, but I own it. I got it locked down. So for me, I could have pay.quixoticflux.eth. I could have, I could have music.quixoticflux.eth and that's like all my music royalties. I could have I could have games.quixoticflux.eth and that's all my gaming royalties. I could, you know, various ways I could imagine setting it up. Um ENS is deployed on the Ethereum main network. That means layer 1, which means robust security and at least for now annoyingly high gas fees. It's also deployed on test networks, which I have never really played around with the test networks. If you use a library It'll automatically de detect the network you're interacting with. That's above my head. You can try ENS out for yourself using the manager app or any of the many applications on the home page. Okay, so we're not going to go too, too, too deep. We're already like almost four minutes in just getting through the introduction to this. But let me show you what I've got. This is me. This is me, right? So here you got my public Ethereum address. This works just fine. If anyone wants to send me a million dollars or ten dollars, feel free. That address works just fine. And you can see here, what I actually have to do is I have to actually reverse record set up my my uh, ETH, right? So what I need to do is I need to save this. And we're not actually going to do this. So this is where gas fees are a fucking pain in the ass. Uh, let's take a look at gas fees. If you don't understand how gas fees work, you know, I'm happy to do a video on this. There's other stuff out there. I'm not going to explain it right now from scratch. A lot of you guys already know how this works. But, dude, you know, this isn't even... This is pretty bad. It's not even like this is around the standard these days. You know, you wait for Sunday. You hope it goes down to 60. Gas fees are insane. I'm just using the Axie uh, front end to look at it. But, you know, you could, you could look at that from a variety of ways. So if I wanted to set this, I would save it, right? And it would ask me to confirm for a gas fee of $94. Woo! So I'm not going to do that right now. And if you're like, Flux, this is fucked. The answer is yes. It, like, if I click this, I'm literally hovering. If my mouse, if my fucking finger slips, 
I thought I did it and I fucking died. I, I mean, I, I, it'd be okay, but I'm not trying to do this. Uh, it went gray. I thought I fucking clicked. Let's reject that shit. Oh my god! Like it went gray because it had to recalculate, and I was like, "Oh, did I click?" I, I literally was just saying, "If I click by mistake, goodbye, a hundred bucks." Uh, yeah. So I'm not gonna do that right now. But when the gas goes low, I will probably have to spend a forty, fifty dollar fee to do that, which is a pain in the fucking ass. Uh, the gas situation is for another video, another topic. If we want to discuss gas on ETH, is it going to get better or worse? What do you do about it? What is ETH 2.0 staking? That's some stuff I'd love to research and talk more about. It's one of the reasons I'm doing these daily-ish YouTube videos as an excuse to research cool shit like ENS and other things. But let's keep moving for now. So there was a big airdrop, which is the thing that kind of uh, 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 sparked this video, the reason I decided to focus on ENS today. So let's see how the token allocation works. I haven't claimed my tokens yet. I could do it right now. Like, I'm fine. I got whatever. I got some ETH in my MetaMask to cover gas fees. But I'm waiting until the weekend just to see if it gets a little cheaper. But let's see what they did. And I can show you guys the claim page. So since they announced ENS would be launching a DAO, a decentralized autonomous organization, a life guild, and the ENS token to govern key components of the ENS protocol, We've had a lot of inquiries as to how it'll be structured. So basically, ENS is the token that is the governance token for this this whole thing. Anybody who's watching this who's not experienced in crypto, I know this is like so many fucking acronyms. Even those of you who've been doing this for years, it's like, oh my god, there's so much. I'm just trying to take you guys with me and find that right level. I'm trying not to go super beginner or super advanced. Trying to find a nice in the middle. I don't want to explain what Bitcoin is from the beginning every time. Or even like what is a governance token, you know, but... We're going to build up videos over time. I can link to different things. Just bear with me and keep watching every day. You'll pick up on stuff if this is a little confusing. My goal is to help you understand. ENS token uh, basically is the governance token. There's a lot of stuff uh, here, which I feel like just like the nature of what is a governance token. What do you do with them? I think we'll, we'll definitely do multiple videos on this topic. So we're going to avoid discussing the details of a governance token. The main thing to keep in mind is that claims opened on the 8th. I'm recording this on the 9th. If you did register an ENS domain uh, before a month or two ago, I don't know the exact date. I forget. It probably says it. Does it say? Yeah. So if you registered before October 31st, you get an airdrop. Uh, you should go to the ens.mirror.xyz. I'll try to toss some links in the description. I'm usually pretty good about that. Okay. So let's go to the claim page. All I'm trying to say is they dropped some tokens. And we got some, and there's a bunch of details. Uh, basically, the longer that you registered your domain for, the more airdrop points you get. So I registered for two years. If I had perfect knowledge and had registered for eight years, whoo, 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 would have been a lot more airdrop tokens. I'm not complaining, though, at all, okay? It's been airdrop season. It's been... uh, whoo, It's been a good month or two for Flux, so I'm not, you know... I'm not complaining. I still live in my mom's house, but hey, I'm getting closer to moving out with all this shit. That's for damn sure. Uh, what am I trying to do now? Let's go ahead and look at the claim page. I'm trying to see where I got to go. I hate, This is the one link I don't have ready. I had most of my links ready. Uh, I'm embarrassed to admit that I have to go to Twitter because I don't know where else to go. Let's go to Twitter. Let's go to ENS uh, domains. They tweeted it. This is, you know, it's pinned on the official account. Even with stuff like this, by the way, you got to be really careful, guys. Like, there have been times where things have gotten hacked. In this case, I can see 10 of my friends, 12, 12 people I know in crypto Twitter are following this account. So I know it's the real one. People hack and, like, clone account. Like, you could click a link. It looks real. And then you get all your, like, you have to really, like, right now, I'm literally double checking before I click this link. I'm, okay, this is real. I see a bunch of people in my, you know, social circle following. So it's not a hacked name. It's not a cloned, like, I'm, I'm, I, it might look like I'm just chilling. I'm actually extremely careful. Like, I'm, I'm flux. I'm the guy who smokes weed on stream and in the videos. And I have investors hitting me up and they're like, oh, I loved your video. I'm like, oh, shit, I was smoking a blunt the whole time. Like, I'm like that guy who's like not always the most careful about everything. I am incredibly careful about security and logistics. I knock on wood. So far, I've got a good record of, of being careful. So I encourage you all to do the same. Don't just go to random Twitter pages, half awake, click. I never do this stuff when I'm tired. I never do this stuff when I'm distracted. I never have anything else. Music, podcast. I turn everything off. I focus, you know. Okay, let's go.
This is getting a little long in the tooth. I just want to show you guys. You can see no name set because I haven't registered Quixotic ETH. Next weekend, I'll do it. I'm going to have to pay like 50 bucks to fucking update my stuff. But... So you can see I uh, my historical activity, registering a name, and my future registration. You can see my fun fact. Just one. Honestly, I, I, I did a blog post about this. I'll put it in the description. I told the story. I kind of just got this out of FOMO four months ago when I saw people talking about it. I felt stupid. Like, why did I just spend 100 bucks on gas registering this ETH domain that I'm not even using? And now here we are. So, yeah, I got really lucky. But this is what the page looks like. I'm not going to claim because it would cost too much gas right now. I could, but I'm just going to, you know, I have until months and months before it goes away and at least a week if I want to vote for the initial uh, initial uh, governance decisions. But just wanted to show you guys what it looked like. And then uh, let's look at the cost of the token. I'll refresh. I think it updates automatically. So 47 bucks right now. I'll be honest. I looked early this morning at like 15 bucks, I thought. Like, I thought it was like 15 bucks. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Nice. Thousand bucks of tokens. And then I looked this morning. It's fucking... <laughs> up here at 47 bucks so it's an exciting airdrop i want to do more videos in the future I, I i'm trying to keep the topic focused i will say just in brief i don't see this look i don't begrudge anybody who cashes out any of these airdrops to improve their quality of life i live with my mom ever since the pandemic i just got a new pair of shoes like literally i was wearing my old shoes you can see there's holes in the bottom like this i wore these shoes for like months with holes in them walk into the grocery store like you don't understand i actually get it i am not a rich investor like i'm i'm from the bottom <laughs> i don't i mean i i could have done better in life i take personal responsibility for many things let's not get sucked into a, a debate of nurture versus nature but i'm just saying i get it and i'm not like gloating about airdrops if you have to cash out i get it i will say though i will say I think this is an opportunity to actually be empowered. If you have felt annoyed about the fact that you don't get to have a say in whatever your industry, you're in, you're in the, you know, the music industry and you think labels have too much power, you work in a in finance and you have to like, you know, your boss makes all the decisions. You work in a retail shop and your manager's a dick. You have domain names but you think D you think the original DNS system is flawed in some way. This is your chance to have a vote, to have a say. And to me, the financial uh, uh, opportunity is always exciting. To me, what this really means um, is that it's an opportunity to actually have that voice. And as a 30-year-old who grew up in a punk music, going to basement shows, you know, like rejecting the system a lot of time, you know, back and forth on like, do I even want to be a part of society? Man, this shit's so corrupt. Like, this is like a chance, you know, this is a chance to try to, to, to act and to build new institutions that can be fairer and better and, and the whole thing. So I would strongly encourage anybody who is able to hold on to these tokens to do so. Even more, you know, God's token, IMX token, the video game tokens, pretty exciting stuff, really exciting. and Very, very huge. Uh, I'm so excited about what's going on there. To me, though, ENS, the naming system of the fucking blockchain that is going to power the world, this is a bigger deal than video games. This is like the Constitution of the United States. This is like... The Magna Carta. This is like really important shit. Maybe not quite as important as the literal constitutions of, of nations, but we're, you know, we're getting closer to that kind of real shit where it doesn't seem as exciting as like what deck list to use for the card game that pays you money. But this is like, you know, will your grandkids have a fair internet and blockchain systems and protocols? Like, are those systems going to hold for hundreds of years? Are we building towards, towards utopia or towards dystopia? To me, this is a fight. You know, to get to the utopian vision of, of of robots do all the work, cryptocurrency functions as a combination of UBI and, you know, jobs uh, and stuff. And and there's abundance for for people around the world. Like to me, that yeah, that's what we're working towards. ENS airdrop is huge in that regard. And I don't know, man, this is one of those things where like I feel like anybody I know who was like. I don't, I don't care if you're on the Bernie Sanders side or the Donald Trump side. Like, if you generally, like, are with the people, left or right or whatever, like, this is the kind of shit where you can empower yourself, in my opinion. And uh, even if you're not on the Bernie or the Donald shit, maybe you fucking love some other political party. That's fine, too. But the point is, this is a big deal. So that's all I have to say here. Hope this video was helpful. Damn, we went close to 15 minutes. Uh, yeah, aiming for about one a day. There's so much going on in cryptocurrency. This is a way for me to focus my thoughts and share them with you. Inform the world. We're trying to increase the daily active users of cryptocurrency one day at a time until 
the majority of people on the planet are crypto native. And then we win. All right, I'm out of here, guys. Have a good one. And I'll see you tomorrow, hopefully. Peace.